What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. Today we're going to be doing an introduction to absolute value. So let's get under the water and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to define and identify a number's absolute value. So let's start with our math vocabulary to help us define these terms. Your math vocabulary. Okay, so we're going to define what absolute value is and then go show you visually what we're talking about. Absolute value is the distance between a number and zero. All right. Now, magnitude is something very similar to absolute value. Many people use it interchangeably, but when we're talking about magnitude, we're going to be talking about the absolute value of a measurement. So to begin this, I want to go all the way back to our lesson when we talked about opposite integers. So it says, what is the relationship between the two integers? Well, the two integers are opposite. Okay, and what two things made numbers opposite? One, they're on opposite sides of zero, and two, they were the same distance from zero, right? Our positive two is two units to the right because it's positive, and our negative two is two units to the left of zero because it was a negative, which means the absolute value of these two numbers is the same. We define absolute value as the distance between zero and an integer, right? So here, our absolute value would be two, and here, our absolute value would also be two, but it was two to the left. Now, before we get into this, there's gonna be a concept that we continue to talk about throughout the lesson. The value of a number is not the same thing as the absolute value. The value of a number is what it's worth. The absolute value is how far from zero it is, okay? For instance, if you have negative $2 in your checking account, that means you owe the bank $2, right? You have no money. Matter of fact, you have less than zero. But the absolute value of that would still be two because it's two units away from zero. Let's take a little bit deeper look into absolute value. So how do you write the absolute value? Okay, so here let's start with negative one and one. These are opposite numbers because they're on opposite sides of zero. And then we're gonna correct our definition now that we know the term absolute value. Instead of saying they're the same distance from zero, we're gonna say they have the same absolute value, right? So they're on opposite sides of zero and they have the same absolute value. So my value of negative one is negative one, right? The absolute value is one because it's one unit away from zero. Well, the value of positive one is one and the absolute value of positive one is also one because it's one unit away from zero. Well, how do you write that then? Okay, how do you write the absolute value of negative one? So all you do is you can put negative one because that's the number you're talking about and then you just put two lines on the side of it like this. Okay, big enough where it doesn't look like a 11 or a negative 111, and this is telling you the absolute value of negative one. So the absolute value of negative one is one. If you wanna show the absolute value of positive one, okay, you just write a positive one with the two lines on the side of it, and the absolute value of positive one is also one, because they're both one unit away from zero. Let's erase this and do negative two. So here I have negative two and two, again, opposite numbers because they're on the opposite side of zero and they have the same absolute value. So if I wanna know the absolute value of negative two, okay, I've represented with the two lines on each side of negative two. If I'm looking for the absolute value, how many units away from zero is, is it? One, two, oops, I passed it. So negative two, the absolute value of negative two is two. The absolute value of positive two, oop, there we go, is again two because it's two units to the right. So opposite numbers have the same absolute value. Hopefully you're picking up on something right here that the absolute value of a positive number is just itself because it's still positive. The absolute value of a negative number is just the positive version of that number. That's kind of a shortcut but conceptually, it, they're both one away from zero, or for this instance, they're both two away from zero. Which leads us to our key thought. There are always two numbers with the same absolute value, right? Because there's always gonna be opposite numbers that are both the same distance from zero, except for zero. There's no opposite of zero. The opposite of zero is zero, right? Because it's zero away from zero. There's a lot of zeros, let's just move on. 
There's no I do problem for this because I want you guys to be taking your notes with me on this, which can be found in the description of this video. There's a link to guided notes that you can either print off or just write on online. So our we do problem says find the absolute value of each number, graph it, and then find the other number with the same absolute value. In other words, the other number with the same absolute value is just the opposite, right? So what is the opposite of the original number, okay? So my first number is 5, all right, which means I'm going to be graphing it right here at positive 5. It's positive. The absolute value of 5 is just equal to 5. Again, you write absolute value with the two lines on either side. And the opposite of 5, or the other number with the same absolute value, would be negative 5, because negative 5 is also 5 away from 0. So if you wanted to write the absolute value of negative 5, you'd put the negative signs on either side, and you could say that equaled 5. Let's do negative 3. So here we have negative 3. We're going to be going 3 units to the left. The negative signs tell me the direction to move. 1, 2, 3. Here is negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 would be positive 3, because it's 3 units away from 0. And the opposite, or the other number with the same absolute value, the opposite of negative 3 is going to be positive 3, right? The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Here we have negative 2 for my last one, so I'm going to be going 2 to the left. I'm going to mark it on my number line. If I want to know the absolute value of negative 2, okay, it's going to be a 2 because it's 2 units away from 0. To hit home again the point we were talking about, the value of a number is not the same thing as the absolute value. This negative 2 is worth negative 2, right? It's less than 0. But the absolute value is 2 because the absolute value is just how far from 0 is it. So again, now I want the opposite of negative 2. Well, the opposite of an opposite is just a positive. So you could say 2. Let's do another we do problem. So it says Elijah withdrew $20 from his bank account. What was the magnitude of the amount that he withdrew? Okay, so this is a word problem. I'm do my sides check over here on the side, our word problem strategy. And I'm going to write the statement. The magnitude of the amount he withdrew is blank. And so I'm looking for anything he withdrew. He withdrew $20 from his bank account. That means that's going to be a negative 20. Okay, and I want to know the magnitude. In other words, I want to know the absolute value of this measurement. So here, in my statement, I've identified, let's develop my plan by drawing a number line here, all right? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Here, I'm going to put 0 here, and negative 20 would be to the left of 0, all right? And I want to know the magnitude. I don't want to know the value that he withdrew. I want to know the magnitude. In other words, I want to know what is the absolute value of my dollar measurement. Well, the absolute value of negative 20 is 20, because it's 20 units away from zero. So the magnitude of the amount he withdrew is $20. Let's do a U-try problem now, okay? So if you're new with us, the U-try problem, you're gonna, after I read it, you're gonna pause the problem, you're gonna try it yourself, and then you can push play to check your understanding. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. You can do it with us as another we do problem in your notes. Our U-try problem says, complete the chart with the two different numbers that can have the given absolute value. So remember we talked about there's always two numbers with the same absolute value because there's always opposite integers or rational numbers except for zero. So go ahead and fill out each of the two options for this absolute value and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it and you are checking your work right now. So if I want to know what two numbers have an absolute value of 35, I know it could be positive 35, right, because the absolute value of 35 is 35. Or it could be the opposite of 35, which would be negative 35, because the absolute value of negative 35 is also 35. So your two options are positive 35 or negative 35. If I want to know which two numbers have the absolute value of 109, again, it could be positive 109, or it could be the opposite of 109, which is negative 109. 1,024. You could have 1,024 because that has that is 1,024 units away from zero, or the opposite of 1,024 would be negative 1,024 again because it's still 1,024 units away from zero. It's just to the left. Hopefully, this was a good introduction to absolute value, and you're not just learning the shortcut 
of writing the positive, but you're actually conceptually understanding what absolute value and magnitude are. So that way you can use them to help you solve questions and actually understand what's happening. Thank you so much. Check out our negative number song and our negative number unit. We would love to have you leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe to join our Instructor Beats family. You can find us on all the social media accounts. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.